So it's merging, so it'll just take a second. Caroline, I'll, I'll put it out on our, our Twitter feed so you don't have to do it. Um, all right, we are live on YouTube. So let me post the link in the chat. And I'll do all panelists and attendees. And for those attendees who have already joined us, um, feel free to uh, say, you know, who you are, something you're excited to learn about today, um, a question you might already have for Sam and the IC Change team. Um, just get that chat box going. We love an active chat. All right, and we have it tweeted to the SciStarter Twitter. So we're sharing that out. Let's get it on Facebook too, and then I think we'll be good to go. I'm gonna post it on ours too. Awesome. Yeah, for those of you who are already tuning in, we're just getting set up. We're going to start right in two minutes. Um, if you're watching on YouTube or if you're in the Zoom room with us, we encourage an active, uh, vibrant chat. So feel free to chime in there. YouTube always picks the most flattering screenshots of me for these posts, but that's okay. And then they make you pay if you want to change it. That's the whole thing. <laughs> I, think that's, I never put that together. You're so right. And they give you three options. And if you want more, you need a premium account. Wow. It's a scam. <laughs> Just kidding, YouTube. Please pick good images <laughs> of me in the future. <laughs> All right. We're one minute away from starting. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, get our slides up. All right, let's get this presented. So this in science meets summer reading. <laughs> All right, it is right, it is time. The time is now. Um, so thank you so much to our whole panel, um, to everyone who's in the Zoom room with us and everyone who's watching on YouTube. As a, a, um, an FYI for our friends on Zoom, we are recording this and we are streaming it live. Um, so anything you put in the chat, we encourage an active chat, but we may read out what you say. Um, I, it may be part of our recorded record forever. So please just keep that in mind. Um, Citizen Science Meets Summer Reading is part of the Imagine Your Story themed summer reading program. Um, this particular event series in partnership with public libraries is presented by the network of the National Library of Medicine and all of us, as well as SciStarter. Um, SciStarter is a citizen science community and we're also very grateful for all the amazing citizen science um, leaders and project um, leaders who have joined these events and shared their expertise with us and community, 
communicated directly with library patrons. So for those of you who are just coming in now on Zoom, um, please say hi in the chat, select all panelists and attendees, maybe say where you're calling in from if possible. It'd be great if you could put your zip code in the chat just so we can keep track of kind of who we're reaching. Um, if you have something you're excited about, put that in the chat too. If you have questions as we present, um, put those in the chat. We'll make sure to get to it during the Q&A portion. Um, so as you can see, we are currently in this event, investigating weather and climate change Q&A with the San Benito County Free Library. Um, so to kind of kick th things off, we're going to get started with a quick poll. So we just want to know, have you ever participated in a citizen science project before? So there are no wrong answers here. If you have, let us know. If you haven't, also let us know. By the end of today, you will know how to do citizen science. Um, you'll know how to contribute to IC change. So it's okay to say no or unsure. You're in the right place. So go ahead and vote. And we're going to close down the poll in just a second. Right now, it looks like about a 50-50 split. Half of the attendees have done it. The other half haven't. Oh. The no's are in the majority now. So we're going to go ahead and end the poll here. Let's share those results. So we have um, a few yeses, a few no's, a few unsures. All good. You're in the right place. And now we just want to know a little bit about you. So we want to know who you are. Are you an aspiring citizen scientist? Are you a parent? of an aspiring citizen scientist? Are you a teacher, an educator, a troop leader? Are you a librarian or part of a library staff? Are you just a bored person on the internet? Or are you none of these? <laughs> Any of this is good. Um, select all that apply. Looks like we have a few um, teachers and educators in the room, which is great. Some library staff members as well. Um, some people who identify with none of these. So good to know that you're not just a bored person on the internet. We'll give you another second to vote. So three, two, one, and we're gonna end the poll there. So let's share those results. All right, so it looks like we got a lot of educators in the room with us. Thanks for joining us. And um, no matter who you are, I hope at the end that you become an aspiring citizen scientist. All right, so now I'm gonna pass my, the mic to my friends at the San Benito County Free Library. Um, feel free to introduce yourselves and kind of talk through this slide. Hi, I'm Caitlin Souza and I am a library assistant at the San Benito County Free Library and one of the um, team that put together summer reading this year. Um, we have a bunch of stuff and that's why I kind of listed this here um, online still available. It's all pre recorded. So even if you are far away, you can feel free to partake in our summer reading program. You don't even need to sign up to just um, go and watch science tellers or Zumba or a magic show. Um, we had a lot of different, you know, uh, things that you could do from a distance. So if you want to share that with your friends, family, or even your students, since we've got so many educators here today, um, feel free. And the, the website is below. Um, there's also a link to it straight from sbcfl.org too. So if you just want to check it out. Um, and we are doing prizes for people who read who uh, meet their reading goals this summer too. So even if you do wanna sign up, we are mailing away um, prizes as well. So uh, keep that in mind too, if you wanna check out the rest of the summer reading program too. Um, is there anything that you wanna add, Elizabeth? Um, well, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> You covered most of it, Kaylin. But hi, hi everybody. Um, my name is Elizabeth Brown. Um, I'm the children's librarian at the San Benito County Free Library in Hollister. Um, I work with Caitlin, and um, we put on summer reading this year. It's been a little bit different because it's virtual, but it's been it's been a lot of fun. And yeah, and people, these are all a lot of the events that we we've had and like caitlin said they're still available online so you can just click online and um the zumba one um that's one of my favorites personally because you can actually you can actually um that's for adults and teens as well it's not just it's not just for kids and um also people can still um sign up for for summer reading it's still going on we encourage everyone to to read and um, yeah, I'm just really excited to be here today. Yay, thanks so much. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, and we have curbside pickup at the library and <laughs> a lot of things going on <laughs> at the library, so. 
Yeah, I mean, just looking at this list, the Zumba, like you mentioned, that sounds like an awesome program. Oh, thanks. A, a digital escape room is just, this is cool. This is cool stuff. Hol- oh, the people of Hollister are lucky. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we heard from our friends at San Benito County Free Library, and you might be wondering, what what program are we in right now? What is citizen scientist, citizen science, and how do I become a citizen scientist? Um, at SciStarter, we define citizen science as a collaboration between scientists and those of us who are curious, concerned, and motivated to make a difference. So. Anyone can be a citizen scientist. You don't have to be any age. You don't need any prior training. You can be 13 years old. You could be 93 years old. You could be a citizen scientist. It just means that you volunteer your time to move science forward. This could be through taking pictures of, you know, weather and climate and uploading it to IC Change. It could be playing a game like stall catchers and helping analyze Alzheimer's research data. It can be, um, taking a picture of a bug and uploading it to iNaturalist to help create a global record of biodiversity. It can be testing water to verify whether or not you have clean water through a project like Earth Echo. There are so many citizen science projects on there, um, out there and you can explore them on SciStarter. SciStarter.org is a place where people can go and use our searchable project finder to find a project that turns their curiosity into impact. So no matter what you're interested in, if you're interested in astronomy or zoology or everything in between, there's a citizen science project out there for you. And as part of summer reading, we have a number of featured projects on our SciStarter.org forward slash NLM page that focus on human and environmental health. So if you're really passionate about um, weather or if you're um, motivated to document your community, I See Change could be a great project for you and you'll learn about it during this program and how you can participate and get started. At this part of our presentation, we really hope that you go over to that SciStarter.org forward slash NLM page to make your SciStarter account. Um, the SciStarter account is basically your passport to discovering all these different citizen science projects. You can keep track of your impact across projects and look back and say, oh, wow, I contributed to so many, I joined so many different projects. And for projects that are SciStarter affiliates, like IC Change, you can actually um, get some statistics about the number and the frequency of your contributions in your SciStarter dashboard. Um, so we really urge you to make that SciStarter account. I hope that you all kind of pull up the screen now um, in your web browser and enter SciStarter.org forward slash NLM to make your account on this page. And as you do that, I'll tell you a little bit about some of the other things you can discover on this page. There's an introduction to citizen science tutorial um, created by the network of the National Library of Medicine and SciStarter in partnership with Arizona State University. And by clicking through this interactive tutorial, it takes about 30 minutes. You'll learn through the what, you'll learn the what, the how, the who, and the why of citizen science. And you actually get a certificate at the end. Um, so I really urge you to give this tutorial a try. You can share it with your friends and family if you have people you want to introduce citizen science to. It's open for anyone to use. So you can find that on the SciStarter.org forward slash NLM page as well. Um, and now I'm going to talk about IC Change. Um, so IC Change is the featured project today. And we are so lucky to have Samantha Harrington here. She's going to talk through the Imagine Your Story theme to talk a little bit about her, her work at IC Change, um, and then about how you can use IC Change to um, submit your qualitative data of observations of your community and tell your story um, through citizen science. So Sam can say it better than me. So without th further ado, we'll pass the mic to Sam. Hi everyone, I'm Sam. Um, I'll give you sort of the fun background on me. I don't actually know if it's that fun, um, but I'm born and raised in Wisconsin. And I always joke that like, we talk about the weather here like way more than small talk. Um, so I was always sort of destined to work in weather and climate, I think even before I really realized it. Um, but my background is in journalism. Um, I love listening to people and learning constantly um, and I like to write so it fit perfectly um, and then I came to IC Change actually as a climate reporter um, and saw the all of the like sort of like micro stories that people were submitting on IC Change um, and thought it was like super cool in that like people had the power to you know tell us about things going on in their community that no one was paying attention to or or no one knew um, because the impacts of climate change are so localized and so different depending on where you are and who you are. Um, and so and so that's sort of where I came from um, in terms of my story and, and how it relates to all the stories that people are sharing on IC Change. 
and I didn't notice at first, but that is Sam and the corn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was looking for something that said, like, Midwesterner. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, yes. All right, great. So I See Change um, is a global community. We have a website and an app um, where people like you and me, um, Caroline, are submitting observations about the weather in their area and how the weather impacts their life. Um, and then those posts contribute to solutions to make your community or your individual self more resilient and prepared for some of the risks that you might face um, as climate change changes the weather in our areas. So to participate in IC Change, it's super easy, it's free. Uh, you can create an account. Um, and like I said, you can create it on the website or on the app. So you know whatever works best for you. Um, and when you do sign up, do it, uh, make sure that you're using the same email that you use on SciStarter so that your accounts are linked. Um, like Caroline was talking about, then you have your, your stats dashboard working right. Um, and then once you have an account, um, you post what you're seeing. And we always say that like no observation is too small and that you're the expert in your own backyard because really we don't wanna constrain people or tell people what to post um, when sometimes you know, we just don't have the expertise that you have of what's weird in your neighborhood or, or how the weather is impacting you. So. Um, we give a rough guide of climate trends that you may be interested in posting about, um, particularly I think for you all in your region, maybe talking about extreme heat or drought, um, seasonal changes if you're a gardener. Um, but let's say, for example, you wanted to post about the heat wave that's been going on. Um, instead of you would post maybe like it's been really hot this last week. And then you talk a little bit about like how that heat has been impacting you. So, you know, maybe you're somebody who likes to jog outside, um, but you really haven't been feeling up to it because it's been so hot. That's a great observation and it tells us a way that the that climate change is impacting your daily life. Um, or maybe you'll post about like weird hacks that you have to uh, to cope with the heat. Like we had someone posting about how they like rig the fans in their living room to blow the air the perfect way or maybe you have like the favorite like lemonade concoction that you use. And then once you post those observations, they appear on our sighting feed, which you can filter by location or by climate topic. So you can you know, just see posts that are in your area, just see posts about a topic that you're interested in, or you can see the whole global feed. And this sort of lets you learn from what other people are doing and seeing. Um, it helps give you insight into some of the you know, weather changes that other people are experiencing and some of the ways that they're coping and maybe you can take some of those um, ideas and implement them into your own life. Um, and so then uh, we, all of these posts are like super powerful and they, we try and take them and analyze them alongside climate trends in a couple of different ways. Um, Caroline, can you switch the next slides real quick? Thank you. So uh, one of the big ways that we sort of report out what people are seeing and posting on IC Change is through stories. Um, so for example, in 2018, we had quite a few people um, in the Los Angeles area reporting like weird happenings with their trees. They were breaking um, unexpectedly, being uprooted. The leaves were really like crinkly and almost burned looking. So we got to dig into that. Um, and found out that the Forest Service is working on a project in the area to identify the kinds of tree species that will be able to handle the heat and the drought um, so that the city and residents of the city know what kinds of trees that they might plant in the future um, so that they would avoid some of these challenges with regards to drought and heat. Um, and we also in other communities have specific projects happening. So for example, we have quite a large presence in New Orleans. Um, that's where our founder is from. And they have a pretty significant flooding challenge issue. Um, and so there are stormwater projects happening and the ice changers that are posting from New Orleans are you know, submitting photos of flooding, telling us how long flooding lasts, telling us about the height of the flooding. And those posts are used by engineers and designers designing stormwater projects. Um, so that we can make sure that um, the like hyper localized impacts of flooding uh, are being taken into account in these projects and making sure that the solutions are designed for everyone in the neighborhood. Um, and then occasionally we will work with um, sort of individual researchers on projects that they're curious about. So for example, right now um, we work with someone, a social scientist who's interested in uh, learning about how people posting on IC change, how their language changes over time as they post um, and how that maybe is 
demonstrative of them like learning or becoming more aware of their risks um, and that would hopefully make them more prepared in their community and their individual selves and families more resilient um, to whatever weather event might happen. Um, so there are a lot of different ways to use IC change. Uh, it's super flexible. Um, so many, like if you have a question about how climate change is affecting your backyard or your city, you could collect data to try and answer that question on IC change. Or if you're just you know, curious about what other people are seeing, there's space for that too. Um, and, and yeah, you can really sort of use it however your, your heart desires and always can reach out to us if you have ideas of ways that we could help you answer some of your questions too. Great, thank you so much, Sam. Yeah. Um, so that was an awesome introduction to IC Change. And now we're gonna let Caitlin ask you a few questions. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Sorry, I was struggling with that unmute button. Okay, um, I'm gonna ask some general questions first and then I do see that there are some questions being asked by the audience too, so I'll get to those too. Um, but uh, just for some general ones. So the theme for summer reading is imagine your story. What strategies have you used to tell the story of I See Change? Ooh, that's a great question. And something we're always thinking about. Um, I think that when we tell the story of icy change, something that's really important to us is um, to know like who we're talking to. Um, so for example, when I knew that I was gonna be talking to you guys, I was like, what projects or what community members do we have in California that um, I could reference or in your, specifically in your area that may be experiencing similar um, weather or similar climate um, to make that story more relevant to you all. Uh, so that's, I think one of the big strategies is sort of like knowing your audience and how to make it relevant to them. Um, yeah, and then I think just IC Change is very like centered on, you know, the power of, um, of individuals, but also individuals in community with each other. And so just sort of being like, as like honest and transparent and clear as, as we can about IC change so that um, everybody sort of feels like they're in this community with us um, and that we are sort of on the same path and have the same goals um, and vision for like wanting everyone to, to have a future that they, that they like are prepared for and that they feel like um, they can like have a great quality of life regardless of what changes. Awesome. Um, that kind of rolls into the next question too. It was just um, tell us, you know, about some of the citizen scientists who participate in the project and um, what your community is like. Oh yeah. Um, I love IC Change because there's so many different people and different personalities. And um, I like to, I get to read the feed a lot just like throughout the day. And so I feel like I like learn about people and um, build relationships with people through that and like what they're seeing. Um, I love to talk about the weather, it all comes back to that. But I think we, there are a bunch of different groups of people. We have people who are gardeners who I can always count on like to post in the spring and say, oh, this is what's happening. We have a woman who keeps bees. Um, so I always look for her bee posts in the winter to see when they first start to emerge. Uh, we do have, I saw somebody in the chat ask about students. Um, we do have like quite a few students or classes. So I love like watching their growth over time and like trying to engage with them um, about what they're seeing. Uh, I think it's really interesting because there's such a like diversity of perspectives of like we can have these conversations between like middle school kids and you know retired science teachers who are gardeners on IC Change and there's like all these opportunities to learn from each other. Um, but I think like the some of the things that we all have in common is we're all really curious about what we're seeing and and really invested in um, in our communities and in sort of gathering information um, to strengthen them. Awesome. Um, that and thank you for answering Don's question about the middle school students. Um, I just want to go try to sign up too, so I could see if there was like an age, and there it doesn't ask for an age or anything like that. So that's nice. Um, uh, if someone wanted to, you know, participate in IC Change, um, but might be nervous about getting started, is there, you know, something that you would like to say to them specifically? Yeah, that's a great question. It is something we hear 
relatively regularly of people saying like, oh, I, I thought maybe I would post this thing on IC Change, but I like didn't know if it was like important enough. And we always just say like it, like there is no such thing as like not important enough. You never know like something that you post today down the line may be indicative of, of some weather that's gonna happen, right? Like in Wisconsin, if we have like a lot of rain in the spring, uh, maybe that means that in the summer, if we get a big storm, all the soil is super, there's gonna be potentially flooding. So it's hard, I think when you're, it's hard to really understand what's gonna happen down the line. And so there's like no bad posts is what I always say, like anything that, that you are observing and anything that you can sort of post about the way that what you're observing is impacting you and your choices and the way that you're living your day um, is super relevant and a great post. Um, and the IC Change community is super welcoming. No one's, if anybody is ever mean to you, you just tell me and I'll, we'll figure it out. Um, but it's, it's fun. It's like a, it's a great group of really curious people um, with, with a lot of exciting insights. So don't be nervous or do be nervous, but do it anyway. Yeah, I had a quick question. Yeah, so Samantha, so um, I was looking at the IC Change website and I saw that it said something about Girl Scouts. Is that right? Yeah, we have a lot of Girl Scouts participate. That's awesome. Yeah, and actually I see change is one of the featured projects in the SciStarter Think Like a Citizen Science journey for Girl Scouts. Um, so there, if there are people curious in that, I can include it in the follow-up email from this event. And if you go to SciStarter and search Think Like a Citizen Scientist, you'll find the Girl Scouts journey and you can select I see change as one of your projects. That's awesome. Yeah, I was in the Girl Scouts, so I that made me happy. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I always love when like a group of Girl Scouts will like go out on like a walk together or an adventure together. Yeah. I think kids post really like the perspective of photos is always interesting because it's never, it's not always something that I would think to take a photo of or right. it's from an angle that I wouldn't expect. So I always learn something from them. Right. That's I love it because it just brings all these different perspectives together. Totally. Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay, so we do have some more from the crowd um, if we want to dive into those. Um, one is really specific about California. What is the hottest climate you ever recorded in California? Ooh, I don't know the answer to that, but I will look and see. I know probably we actually don't have as many users in the Western US as we do in the Eastern US, which is why you guys have a big impact because we'll see your posts. Um, but we do have people, um, I would say, Probably the people, oh, there's somebody who's in Southern California in almost like East, Southeastern California that posted once and it was really hot there, but I can't remember exactly what the temperature was, but they were like sort of in like a deserty environment. Um, I'll look it up and I'll send the information to Caroline and I'll send you the post link so you can see it. As someone not in a deserty area, I can tell you that we've had the craziest weather for our area. It got up to like 114 um, last summer. And for us, it's like unheard of. So um, just to throw a number out there from the Bay Area. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good post for IC Change next yep. time. <laughs> you could honestly just post the temperature every day, right, Sam? If someone wanted to, that would be welcome. Oh, that's cool. A lot of data. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then another um, anonymous um, person asked, does the platform only allow posting about US cities? No, no, we're global, um, which is also really fun to see what people are observing in other countries. Um, we definitely, most of the community does come from the US, but it's open to anyone. Awesome. I love it. As like someone who's in the library community, we're all about sharing information. And so something, a project like this is like near and dear to my heart too, because um, I actually got my bachelor's in sustainability. So mm -hmm. I'm like all about this right now. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, this is really great. Yeah, that's awesome. And libraries are such like cool centers of community. And um, I don't know, really, it's awesome to, to connect with you guys. Yeah, um, thank you just to kind of throw some more questions out there to you too. Um, is there anything um, about IC Change that has surprised you? Hmm, that's a great question. 
I think that there are lots of things that surprise me. Um, and they're mostly like observations from people that I wouldn't expect or that live in climates that like I'm not familiar with. Um, I think that someone posted, there's, we, this summer there's been a man um, from Tokyo posting about air quality every day, um, which has been really interesting. Uh, Cause I, you know, I don't, I know like a little bit of this sort of science of air quality, but he like po will post like particular measurements um, and how they change based on what the weather is. So like days when it's raining, uh, the air quality is better. Um, so I've learned a lot from him about that. Um, but I also, I love all the like little like stories of like, I don't know how a, we have a woman in Connecticut who often posts about, um, she has a caterpillar moth pest that really defoliates her oak trees. And so it's, that was surprising to me to learn about. Um, and as I got to learn about it, I realized that it was a problem in a lot of areas. And like in Wisconsin, we spray for these moths too. Um, so I think that's something surprising has been like all of the connections and all of the ways that, that the weather, even as it can be different everywhere, we all sort of experience similar things and have a lot of knowledge that we can share. I always use heat as the example because everybody you know, experiences heat, even if we, I don't necessarily experience 114 degrees, um, but even when, but still it gets hot. And so that experience of like trying to cope and manage it um, is something that like we all as humans across the world are sharing and have a lot to learn from each other about. Um, so I think that that process has been surprising. The like idea that things can be very different that are surprising and also all the things that can be the same. I want to check out the air quality guys information. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I became super obsessed with air quality when we had a bunch of fires here in California like caused by the weather, <laughs> um, you know, and then just the, how the weather affected the air quality after the fires too. And, you know, helping it get better because um, we'd have winds come in that would get rid of some of this, this terrible, terrible air quality for us. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always, I think the other thing that I guess is surprising is the ways that um, things like air quality or heat like affect us, not just like physically, but also mentally and like, um, you know, air quality can like give people like it can be harder for kids to focus in school when the air quality is bad or like things like that, that I think I also forget in addition to it being surprising the way that we're all connected across the world of like the way that like we as like individual people and individual bodies are so connected to the weather and so impacted by everything that's happening. Um, that's been a, a lot of learning in that space, which has been really fun. It's like, uh, it's a small world, even though we're all Ooh. far away from one right. another. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially during these times. <laughs> yeah. Um, and last, last question from me. Um, what is something that you wished everyone knew about citizen science? I think, um, yeah, I think that we sort of touched on this, but I think that I wish that everyone knew that like there was space in it for them, regardless of, you know, how they view themselves as an expert or not expert. Um, your perspective in, in this like particular example, like your experience with climate change is really important, even if you don't necessarily realize it. Um, you know, we, there are a lot of like big models that can tell us things about what the future might look like, but the only way to really know how um, you fit in there and like how individual people and communities fit in is to sort of take stock of where you're at and figure out how, um, how you want your future to look um, and, and sort of manage the risks um, that might come up as you do that. Um, so yeah, I think I just, I want everyone to know that like there's space for you here and whatever questions or curiosities you have, um, you can find it, I'm sure, in either IC Change or any other citizen science project you're looking for. That's awesome. And we're getting a lot of questions about um, temperature. Sam, could you shed some light for us? Because I know IC Change has all these different investigations. The merits of posting are exploring one of the investigations, like a temperature investigation, for example, versus just doing a general post. Yeah, so there, it's pretty much the sort of the same mechanism. We just use the investigations to you know, give people ideas of what to post about. Um, but when you're creating your post, you can either, if you're on the IC Change website or app, 
Um, you can either do it through the investigations page or just creating a post from the sightings feed. And they're essentially the same um, when you're creating a post not through the investigations, you can still tag an investigation. And we're working on developing it so you can tag multiple investigations because we know that these things aren't all as separate um, as they may seem. Um, but yeah, I think the, the merits of tagging your post with an investigation are if you or somebody else were to go to the sighting speed and wanted to filter it by that investigation, then your post would show up there. So like if you were looking at all the extreme heat posts, the way to make sure that yours is in that view is by tagging it. Um, but it'll appear in the general sighting speed regardless. Great. Um, another question for me. Um, I'm wondering, so I see change is focused really on like qualitative data, like people sharing how things impact their own lives or things that they've noticed from their own personal expertise as a resident of a given area. Um, I'm curious about how qualitative data on in IC change might interface with quantitative data. Definitely. Yeah, that's something that we are always experimenting with. Um, in the example of the New Orleans community, one of one part of that project was um, we distributed, I can't remember how many, upwards of 50 rain gauges across the city. Um, and there is an input that is actually available to the global community. So when you're posting and you're um, tagging your posts with storms and flooding, you'll see a little storm detail section where you can add the data, uh, like rain total data, as well as storm start and stop times and flood start and stop times. Um, that's something that we heard from the engineers that we were working with that are working in stormwater that it was really important for them to understand not just how bad flooding was in like a residents area, but also how much rain they got there because these Gulf storms are very localized. Like I, this was something that was surprising to me not living near there is that one neighborhood in New Orleans could get like seven inches of rain in two hours and another could get like one inch um, and they're not that far apart. So being able to have that like very localized data that is like directly connected to someone's observation of flooding was helpful. Um, and we're experimenting that with heat uh, as well. Um, that'll be something that we're doing later this summer, um, starting in New Orleans as well. Someone asked, are there times of the year when people post a lot more than on average? Yeah, we always say that summer is our busy season because it's when all the like big storms and weather happen, seem to happen. Um, but I would also say that spring is big for us. And those are sometimes my favorite posts because it's cool to see people track over time, like when the first crocuses bloom in their area, um, when their last snow happens. A lot of the like first of seasons we get in the spring um, and there's always lots of like beautiful flowers on the feed. It's a, it's a pretty time of year on ICG and Jersey. That's so great. Um... What's one of the quirkiest observations you've seen on IC change? I know you mentioned the bees. Um, that seems like a really fun one. Are there other kind of like unexpected examples like that? My favorite one actually came from, I think, I can't remember if she's in high school now. She's someone who started with us um, as a middle school student and has continued to use it after uh, like moving on from that class. But she lives in Connecticut and I can't remember if it was last summer or the summer before, but um, there was a heat wave in Connecticut and she tracked the number of hours it took for her to practice for her piano lesson um, during a really hot day and during a less hot day and it took her a lot more time to prepare when it was hot because she was having a lot of trouble focusing and she like put in the hour calculation in her post and it was so I had never seen anybody do anything like that and it was really interesting it was a great way to like show an example of how heat was affecting her ability to to focus on what she wanted to do. That's so interesting. We have time for about five more minutes of questions. So if you have a burning question, make sure you get it in there. Um, someone asked, how has the pandemic changed or influenced climate change? Ooh, there are a lot of different ways. Um, so I think that the, I'll say like in terms of the environment, uh, a way that it, the, the pandemic has influenced the environment that a lot of people are talking about um, is uh, like improvements in air quality or reductions in emissions, um, which has the potential to be useful for climate change if we keep it up um, once the pandemic is over and we like, continue to have decreased emissions. 
Um, but I would say that there are like concerning ways that the pandemic has interacted with climate change as well in terms of people being able to access public resources that they need, especially over the summer when it's like hot or there are hurricanes and, and public shelters there. I think most of the hurricane shelters were open, but I know that early on um, in the sort of Great Plains, a lot of the public tornado shelters weren't open. Um, there's like limited access to places like libraries where people might go to cool down if they don't have, you know, an ability to do that in their own home. Um, so I think that if there's lots, I think, you know, the pandemic and climate change impact our lives in like every way. Um, but I do think that like there are lessons from the pandemic in the ways that we like need to work together to, you know, sort of to to achieve um, like health, community health, like you want it on an individual level, but like you need to do it for your neighbors and for your city and for your family. Um, and it's the same sort of thing for climate change in terms of both being prepared um, for risks that you may face and also, you know, work in mitigating it. It's the, there are these collective pro problems that we all really need to like buy into and work together. Um, and there's so much that can be done through that collaboration, I think. That's great. Um, Caitlin or Elizabeth, do either of you have any more questions for Sam? I have a couple, if that's okay. Go for it, that's awesome. Oh yeah, great, thank you. Um, so let's see. So um, I remember um, talking to Carolyn um, when we when we first met, <laughs> when Caitlin and I met, met up with her and she was um, giving an example of, um, of seeing a flower outside of your um outside of your home and like seeing how seeing how it had um changed and i know um samantha you were talking about um gardeners that there's a lot of um gardeners that um that um that have um asked questions and are involved um so um i guess my question is um what what are what are the people um, posting who um, who are the gardeners? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I'm also one of the people that sort of posts as a gardener. So I'll try. Oh. And, <laughs> so I'll give you some insight into how I post, but also how other people do. I think that um, in the spring, it's similar to how I was talking about. I use I see change. I get really impatient in the spring. I like want my flower I like where are my daffodils why aren't they here what's going on and so I can go back and check and say oh last year they bloomed at this date um and I have I think I have like about a five-year record now of when things were blooming um and it's always really interesting like oh this year we had a cold spring this is what happened um but I also people will use it to track pests in their gardens that are unusual um and the ways that they affect them I think the amount of precipitation is big for gardeners too because if you get too much if you have a vegetable garden all your tomatoes are like all split if you have too much rain but if you don't have enough um maybe you're having to water it yourself or uh if you don't have that ability then you know some of the plants um might have trouble surviving through the year uh so i think that is something that people are posting about also we had a really cool post this sort of gets back to the pandemic we the, there's a museum in Durham, North Carolina that um, for a week, every week this spring was like sort of sending out a prompt to people in their community to post on IC Change about a certain question. And one way they asked, or one question one week was, how has the, how has your sort of experience with your environment changed as a result of the pandemic? And this woman posted that since um, she had been working from home, she was spending more time in her garden painting watercolors of her flowers mm -hmm. um and so she posted photos of her paintings on ICT, which was really cool oh, i think that was the first uh but yeah gardeners post all kinds of things that's cool and do um would this be a climate change issue i'm not, I'm not really sure i'm obviously not the gardener <laughs> but uh, but as far as vegetables go like getting like a really big i don't know like a really big like zucchini or something like with that with that yeah. is that like affected by the climate or it might yeah I mean I personally don't know but if, I think if you have that question it's still worth it to post and you can post it with that question and I can like try and dig into it I don't okay. I do know that we did a story a while back about um people in Colorado were posting that even though 
they had had a ton of drought their like cherry harvest was the sweetest that it had ever been oh, um, and so there's some connection between like not enough water and like more sugar content so they were like really huh. cherries so definitely i think that climate change will affect like vegetable gardens um but i don't totally know like the ways i think like if it's really giant maybe you just forgot to pick it would be an option too um right. But yeah, I think like the consistency, I know cucumbers can get weird if they have too much water, I think. Like a weird oh, really? Texture. Possible. That's interesting. That's Great, we have, we have a little bit more time for questions. Let's try maybe two more, if Caitlin or Elizabeth have any more. All right, has anyone put anything in the chat? Yeah, there's some more in the Q&A too. Um, I'm not sure that we would know the answer to this one. Um, I know I most certainly don't, but how did um, Fukushima affect Tokyo's climate? Ooh, so. Yeah, don't know, but yeah. potentially a question that you could, the other fun thing about IC Change is you could comment on people's posts. So if you wanted to ask the man in Tokyo who's been posting about air quality, he might. He, he might have some it. idea, yeah. yeah. And then the next one is, how do we fight against the need for reduced spending on protecting the environment due to the pandemic? Um, interesting. I think I, that there are probably a lot of different ways and it depends on where you're at. Um, I always tend to think that like you can have the biggest impact like the more local you go. So if you look at like the money that your local government is spending on the environment, like maybe there are ways to get involved in, maybe they're doing virtual town meetings now. Um, but yeah, I think that's a, it's a good question of like, what what effects does the pandemic have on like our our like city governments or state governments spending and what does that mean for the environment i don't i mean i don't totally know i think we'll, we'll find out um but i think like the yep. more involved you are and the more you know and the more that you participate um maybe the more impact you'll have um and this is coming from me next question um <laughs> uh if we could post about one thing uh, in our area, what would be like the most helpful thing for us to be posting about? Mm -hmm. Good question. I mean, maybe it'd be like specific to the area. Maybe that's more complicated than, <laughs> than I at first imagined. But um, like, if you could ask us to do one type of post, what would what would it be? Yeah, I think um, I think we're really interested in heat right now and just sort of this like shared experience of, you know, heat. and we don't have a ton of people posting from your area about it. So lessons that you guys have might be relevant to people who are experiencing it in other parts of the country and like vice versa. Um, but I think also, I mean, as we look to fall, maybe you guys are looking into, you know, wildfire season. Um, so that's always something good to post about. Um, but yeah, I think, and, and I'm just sort of like, I'd be curious about anything you guys are seeing just because we don't have a large presence of community members in your area. Um, right. So it'd be exciting. Like, I don't know, what kinds of butterflies do you see? What kinds of animals do you see? What yeah. does, what flowers, what trees? Yeah. That's a call to action for Hollister, California. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Help out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's super easy to, in the time that we've been here, I have downloaded, signed up, and checked out the area. So Woo! that easy, people, <laughs> that easy. <laughs> I think that's going to have to be our last question for the sake of time. But thank you so much to Caitlin, Elizabeth, and Sam. Um, yeah. Now we're going to pass the mic to our thank friends you. at All of Us, specifically David. Thanks, Carolyn. Hello, everyone. I'm David from the Research Program at the University of California, San Francisco. And we're excited to join you on today's citizen science webinar series. And I'm here, here to tell you about a nationwide public health research project from the National Institutes of Health that's currently underway. And it's called the All of Us Research Program. The mission of the All of Us Research Program is simple to accelerate health research and medical breakthroughs. Uh, next slide, please. So we're all different and we need healthcare 
that's tailored to us as individuals. Unfortunately, healthcare providers don't always have the information they need to make tailored recommendations because research hasn't always included diverse groups of people. So we're hoping to change that. This research program is seeking volunteers from all walks of life to be our partners. And this project is looking for 1 million or more people across the country to help build one of the world's largest and most diverse databases for health research. By looking for patterns, researchers may be able to learn more about what affects people's health. Uh, next slide, please. So all of us is a precision medicine study, but what does that mean? So precision medicine is a new way of looking at health treatment and prevention as being designed for individuals. Doctors could take into account a person's lifestyle, environment, and biological makeup to figure out the best treatment uh, for that individual. Uh, next slide, please. So the neat thing is that we already have and use precision medicine in some ways now, such as eyeglass prescriptions. The eye doctors can tell us exactly which lenses will work best for us, but uh, when we visit our regular doctor, they may be more likely to prescribe the treatment or prevention that works best for most people. Well, you may not be like most people, so with the help of a lot of volunteers pitching in, one million or more contributing to this project over time, we can build a large diverse uh, national database to help eliminate one size fits all medicine. Uh, next slide, please. Many communities were left out of research in the past. So we don't know as much about how certain diseases or uh, treatments affect people differently. All of us wants to include people from you know, all communities. So the knowledge we gain uh, benefits everyone. So how can you uh, participate? One of the great parts about this project is that just about anyone in the US can take part as long as you're over 18. Um, you can get started by visiting our website at joinallofus.org. And enrollment is free. Um, so you don't need, you also don't need insurance to uh, participate. If you join, you can take part in surveys on different health topics and uh, you can complete consent forms. Some participants share their electronic health records, others donate blood samples. It's up to you what and how much you share. When you join, you allow approved researchers to include you in this national research program. We hope to open our clinics again here at, at UCSF and other sites around the country uh, where participants can donate blood and urine samples and complete the physical measurements. Um, if you don't live in the Bay Area or even California, that is okay. Uh, you can still join the study online and partner with the closest medical center uh, near you. Uh, next slide, please. So here are some more ways you can learn about our program. You can see what we're doing and connect. Uh, for instance, you can read about our latest efforts to address COVID-19 health disparities through research, or learn about uh, what's new with all of us in our newsletter. Uh, next slide, please. We'd love to hear from you. So whether you're curious about public health research, interested in learning more about precision medicine, uh, or you may be motivated to make a difference and, and want to help us create a healthier future. 
So here's our, our website, our email address, uh, and our phone number. Please feel free to reach out to learn more uh, about participating or with any questions you may have. So I'm going to end here, and thank you so much. Thanks, David, and thank you to all of us California for being here today and helping support this program. Um, Absolutely. So, Thanks for collaborating. Yeah, thank you. So as a final note, we're going to pass the mic back to Caitlin and Elizabeth to talk about ways people can stay involved with San Benito County Free Library in Hollister, California. Hi. Thank you again. Um, and thank you everyone for being here too. This really means a lot to us too and to be able to put this on for our patrons. Um, Absolutely. Just to you know, reiterate, we definitely still have summer reading going on. I know the other slide had um, more information specifically about that, um, but it is on our website too. Um, other things that we have coming up, you know, always check out the website. There's always things, we've got different programs and things coming up. Um, one of them, particularly for the teens, is we're going to have art classes starting this next Saturday. Um, so all through Zoom and anyone is welcome to participate. You don't have to have a library card to participate. Um, you know, it's open for everyone. Um, if anything that this pandemic has like taught us is that sharing is just what everyone should be doing because we all need to come together and help each other out and have things to do and just uh, really come together, you know? Um. <laughs> I see change art fusion idea. You could have, you could paint the weather in oh, your art class. Cool. There you go. <laughs> Um, that and we are doing, you know, curbside pickup for those who are local still too, um, just to keep that in mind. Is there anything else that you'd like to add, Elizabeth? Um, let's see. Um, we've been doing, um, we've been doing story times. Um, so we've been doing virtual, um, virtual story times. Um, and let's see what else. Um, we have, um, we have zip books. So, um, so that, that, that's kind of cool. So um, that's a way that um, our patrons can get actual physical books. So before the, um, so when the pandemic first started, initially what we had was we had um, e-resources so people could get e-books and read, but, um, and, but we've um, had zip books for a while now. It's been really popular. So basically, if there's a book that you're interested in that's not in our collection that you um, that you don't see um, in the catalog, then um, you can fill out a form and um, and we'll order the book for you and um, have it delivered to your home. And we had this before the pandemic, and it's a really cool it's a, a really cool program. Um, let's see. Oh, with summer reading, I wanted um, to mention that um that one of our programs um did have to do with with planning and with gardening um <laughs> that there was one about tomatoes <laughs> yes i love that yeah, yeah actually taking the seeds out of the tomatoes to plant them too right yeah yeah and um let's see oh and i know um that like with school starting we're just we're just trying to um well, Caitlin and I were part of something called SPLAMBA, so it's School and Public Library Association, Monterey Bay area. Yeah, that's it. I think I got it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we meet monthly, and um, there there are some, it's mostly public, um, people who work in public libraries, but there's also people from school libraries, and so um, we're really interested in, um, in helping, um, helping schools and teachers out right now um, with the pandemic. Um, I know, um, yeah, yeah. And, um, and like with the digital divide and I know that, um, even if you don't have, um, access to a computer, I know that, um, you can, um, call, um, call the library if there's a book you want to place on hold for curbside pickup. Um, but yeah, yeah. So we're, um, we're excited. <laughs> Thank you again for having us. Um, and yeah, excited to be here. Yeah, I'll be following your posts on IC Change. Thanks again. Yeah, absolutely. And um, for our friends from um, Hollister, California, don't forget to use your library's e-resources. Um, you heard about all the different programs they're putting on that you can attend from home online. You can also access this book called The Field Guide to Citizen Science through your library's e-media. So Cloud Library, Libby, and Hoopla for the Hollister area. 
Um, and this is the book, The Field Guide to Citizen Science. I See Change is actually featured within, and this is a book by um, SciStarter's founder, Darlene Cavalier. So we hope you all check it out. Um, for those of you tuning in who aren't from Hollister, um, I, I'm sure your library has e-reading services as well. So hopefully this book is in there. Um, most likely it is. And as kind of a final note, we urge you all to go to SciStarter.org forward slash NLM to find IC Change. As you can see, it's um, one of the featured projects on this page, as well as to see the other um, summer reading events. We're partnering with libraries a bunch more in California, so you'll see our friends from all of us California again, as well as libraries from all over the country. We had an event earlier this morning with Missouri, uh, the Riverside Library, um, and we also have events with libraries in Kansas um, and every pretty much all over the United States. So feel free to tune in. Um, we have different projects like IC Change, Debris Tracker, Stall Catchers, all these projects on the SciStarter.org forward slash NLM page um, that uh, are featured in these events where we have experts from those projects come to talk to us and engage in Q&A. Um, so you can RSVP for all those events at SciStarter.org forward slash NLM. And Last but not least, thank you. Thank you to all of you for being here, for doing citizen science, for contributing um, and sharing your knowledge to um, help us get more insights about the world. Um, I have one last request for you. I really hope that you take this survey. If you're a participant in this webinar, go to tinyurl.com forward slash summer reading five participants. And if um, one of our panelists could put that in the chat, that would be awesome. Um, we really, really urge you to fill out the survey just so we can learn um, what resonated with you, any suggestions you have for us. Um, we are all ears, so please fill out the survey if you attended this event, whether you're on YouTube or in the Zoom room with us. Um, does anyone, are there any other final questions or thoughts from our panelists or from the chat box? I wanted to say one quick thing if, the, if there's time. Yeah, go for it. We have yeah, three minutes no. left. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, just that I know we were talking about heat, about um, the issue of heat. And I was thinking, what about like on the other on the other side? So the the issue of cold. So, so in California, so, so where Caitlin and I live, so it doesn't it doesn't really <laughs> snow. I remember it snowed a long time ago, I remember, but it was it was a it was a big deal. So do you, um, Samantha, do you get, um, what, what do, what are people saying about people who live in warmer climates about, um, maybe, it, maybe it's snowing and maybe it'd be like an, an unusual occurrence in, that is brought about by, by, um, the climate change? Yeah, definitely. Anything unusual like that post it. Um, and maybe, you know, your question is like, is this something that I'm going to start seeing more and more. And that's something that, you know, we can do research on, we can talk to scientists and try and get an answer to for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Very cool. Um, Caitlin or Elizabeth, do you see anything in the chat that we need to mention or any other thoughts from our audience? Um, let's see. We do have one question and it's really specific to a company, but um, does Tesla help the climate? <laughs> You know, that kind of raises the question for me. I think in our last minute, we're going to tackle this huge question, but I'm interested, <laughs> yeah. I'm interested Sam, if um, political posts are ever um, part of IC change, or if you ever see people posting things about like a particular political party or like the, making, you know, those types of comments about like Tesla or like big organizations, like, and how they relate to climate and weather. Do you ever see your community post about things like that? We don't often, um, occasionally, it'll be like some, when there was the big global climate march, um, some people posted photos of them from like rallies, which was cool because we had someone post one for, from Berlin and then someone posted from Boston and someone posted from New Orleans. Um, but for the most part, people aren't actively talking, I wouldn't say like in terms of like politicians, um, but people definitely will like, like advocate for our local solutions. They might post about flooding and say like, I. I really wish my the city or the you know Department of Public Works would fix this or they sometimes will have specific ideas that they'll suggest but in general that's pretty much what it sticks to not we don't necessarily have a problem with it it's just um, I think the community is we've sort of encouraged them to be very focused on like the themselves um, but certainly I mean their politics impacts all of our lives so it's not not unforeseeable that it might happen, but it's not common. 
That's right. And as Sam said, you all are the experts in your own backyard. So whatever you want to post or whatever insights you want to share, take them to IC Change. We really want you all to go to scistarter.org forward slash NLM to discover all of our resources and access instructions for IC Change. And in closing, please take the survey um, so we can hear from you and serve you better. Um, thank you so much to our awesome panel, to um, Elizabeth, to Caitlin, to Sam. And um, we're going to end the event here. We'll see you all online. Thanks again. Thank you, everyone, Thank again. You. Bye. 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 Bye.